I know last week Jana shared about how, you know, she had the, sub, we're in the fruits of the spirit and, and she shared how, you know, Chris and I got all the good subjects and she got the boring one, which she did great with. Um, I didn't know which of the fruit of the spirit I had this week, but um, uh, about the middle of the week, you ever have that thing in your relationships or in your family where uh, everything goes sideways and then it escalates? <laughs> oh, <yeah>. my brother <laughs> so everything was talking, so something happened and then reaction and then reaction so Damien and Eileen and I and pretty soon we're in this huge fight screaming I'm well I'm doing most of the screaming and yelling and uh, calling names and you know I know it's hard to believe and uh, basically I'm loving and uh, and then we're all crying, and then we're all yelling again. The neighbors are going, what's with those people? They just moved in. <laughs> you know? And I mean, this went chaos. And the next morning, I woke up and realized I've got to preach today. I wonder what the fruit, oh no, what if it's like gentleness or something like that? Oh no, what am I going to do? I'd never be able to do this. And it was such a miracle. I came into the office, and I opened the Bible, and it was faithfulness. I went, okay, I can do that being a total jerk at home. <laughs> barely, just barely. So I've got a week to get it together for gentleness, okay? So um, <laughs> meekness. Yeah, there was no meekness in our fight. Um, and I know you guys probably can't relate to that because um, who fights anymore? The people they love the most. It got wild. <laughs> it got wild. Um, so anyway, so let's talk about faithfulness instead of that. We'll come to that later. You know. Uh, so um, uh, read the passage. Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Glad I didn't have that one today. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. I'm doomed. <laughs> Against such things, there's no law. Uh, that's what we've been looking at. So, um, so coming to this, and what does it mean when, the, 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 when, when we have a life in Christ and the Holy Spirit's working in our life, we begin to show the very characteristics of who God is. And one of them is uh, faithfulness. Now, the word here for faithfulness is actually the same word as for faith. So it could be a little bit confusing because you think, well, uh, I have faith. You know, I believe certain things about the Bible. I believe certain things, you know, about Jesus and God. And so I, I have faith. Um, what's the difference? Well, I think that faithfulness is just the living out of the implications of our faith. So they really are pretty indistinguishable. It's because we don't have a, our faith on one hand and then the rest of our life on the other, although sometimes it feels like it if you're in the Westfall house. Uh, it might feel that way, but it's all one. And so uh, who we are in Christ and, and our relationship with God and, and uh, the grace that we experience in that relationship then starts to permeate the way we treat the people around us and each other and how we treat ourselves. Uh, and, um, and that's what I want us to look at today, this faithfulness. Now, if it comes from uh, God's character, um, my preaching Bible fell apart finally. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm using a different one. So I don't know if I can actually preach with a different Bible. It's been so many years. But um, in, I know you read this all the time, Lamentations chapter 3. Um, <laughs> I just go to it because I'm depressed. So, uh, but uh, it, it starts out in chapter 3 with just a litany of bad things happening to this person. One after another, I mean, broken bones, my teeth are smashed against the gravel. I mean, you know, hard stuff all, all through it. And then in the midst of all that, it says... And yet, this I call to mind, and because of this, I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we're not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They're new every morning. And he says this, 
Great is your faithfulness. And I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. I'll wait for him. Great is thy faithfulness. If God is living out in his relationship with us, the implications of his faithfulness, then that becomes part of our character. And, and all we need to do is begin to reflect who God is and how he relates to us. Now, if we see God as a punishing, mean, uh, disconnected uh, uh, cop uh, somewhere who's just waiting for us to slip and then to smash us down, then pretty soon that's kind of the character we'll start to reflect in the people around us. And, uh, um, and, and you know, we've all known folks who thought that God was mean and oppressive and or an absentee landlord, or all those things, and they start acting that way, and you go, "Wow, um, it's too bad they didn't meet the Lord of the Scripture, whose uh, compassions never fail, um, and who has this great faithfulness." So, um, what does it mean for us? It means that there's a, a, a willful not accidental, a willful um, staying in. It's a staying power of, of not abandoning, not running off, not uh, uh, leaving when things get bad. Um, and it's, um, it's a steadfastness that can morph uh, easily. I mean, this is a problem. It's easy to morph it into kind of being rigid. Um, and yet that's not what uh, faithfulness is in Scripture. But sometimes we take that sort of, uh, I'm staying, I'm solid, I'm, uh, I'm not waffling. And that suddenly becomes, I'm rigid and I'm locked in and I'm not, I'm not going to uh, be open to new information. And so, so it's very, the, that dark side of faithfulness is that, is that we become this kind of rigid, hard, uh, walled off, Person. And I got to tell you, I mean, churches are filled with people who have twisted faithfulness uh, a little too far. And all of a sudden, there's no grace, there's no freedom, there's no love. So the faithfulness is a staying in and a not waffling in expressing love, in expressing compassion, in expressing care, and that that doesn't go away. And it, neither does it morph into my way or highway. And so um, that's really important to get because, um, you know, I've been in church a long time, way too long, but I, I've been in church so long that I, I've known people who were just rigid people and that was seen as a spiritual value. That, that was like, wow, they must be really spiritually mature because they're so rigid. <laughs> and you go, no, actually, it's, it's about freedom. You know, it's about freedom and grace and love. And so um, it's, it's important for us to... Uh, recognize that faithfulness is expressed in freedom and grace and love. His compassions never fail. Um, they're new every morning. Now, what's character? If we say that God's character is reflected in us and we begin as the fruit of the Spirit, we start to have this character. The character are the, the marks. Uh, like, you know, when you go through stuff and you get kind of scars on your face or your hands, um, or your, your body. Uh, anybody go through stuff and you have scars? Anybody get my, my age and, and not have scars? <laughs> or at least limp a little? Um, so I've got one here. Um, right here. I don't know, you probably can't see that. We'll show it to the camera. It's right along here. It's a, a scar that I've had for uh, years and years and years. It was We were living in Pasadena, and we had a cat who was um, schizophrenic. <laughs> well, it's the West Ball home, you know, what's new? So we had this schizophrenic cat who would hide out forever, and, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a beautiful picture there. It was a, a silver um, uh, cat that was fluffy and everything, but it, it didn't want to be with me. So anyway, we are moving, and I had to find the cat hidden away in some dark recesses of the garage, and I went to pick it up to get it so we could take it with us. And pain over indignity, it scratched my arm and then peed on it. 
<laughs> it was like, what? What? Can, it's not enough to leave me bleeding here, and then and then you have to insult me, you know. So every time I I look at my arm, I think of that lovely pet. <laughs> I don't know. It's just maybe it's just me, but but we have scars and we have things, and they and they tell stories about our life, and they kind of also tell what we've been through, right? So, so our character is the evidence of what we've been through and how God's brought us through these things, and it actually becomes a, a testimony, a testimony to God's faithfulness that we're even around after what we've gone through. And, uh, or in my case, that we even have pets in the house. You know, that's a whole other thing. But um, I love this Lamentations passage because... Um, it, a little homework assignment. Read the first part of Lamentations 3 this week. It is so painful to read. And then he said, but here's why I have hope. I have hope in the midst of all of this horrible stuff. Um, I have hope because of God's great love and faithfulness. And that his mercies are renewed. They come back every day. We don't use them up. And I just... Uh, think that um, we've got to catch a sense of this and, and it doesn't have anything to do with us deciding that we're going to uh, never let anyone down or that we're, we're going to um, live out every expectations of our faith and we're not going to fail at that and we're not going to ever disappoint the Lord. It's not that at all. It's that we can trust you know, if we have a relationship with Jesus, we can trust him to be faithful to us and to um, stay with us because he says, I'm, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's his commitment to us. I'll never leave you or forsake you. So uh, we can actually begin to trust him. Now, uh, I love this quote from St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, and he was asked about, you know, what special anointing or power did he have in his life that God would pick him and bless him so much? Uh, which I guess that's a question that you ask to somebody named St. Francis. You know? uh, but um, this is what he says. This must be why the Lord has blessed my efforts. He looked down from heaven and must have said, where can I find the weakest, the smallest, the meanest man on the face of the earth? Then he saw me. said, now I've found him. I'll work through him, for he will not be proud of it, nor will he take honor away from myself. He'll realize that I'm using him because of his littleness and insignificance. Wow. Where can I find the weakest, smallest, and meanest man on the face of the earth? See, it's not what we bring to the table. It's not how hard we try. It's not that we bear down and say, okay, I'm going to really be faithful here. It, it's not that at all. It's that we let God's incredible faithfulness and love and mercy move through us so that so we don't say, you know, I kind of got it together in this area, you know. Oh, man, they should have had that fruit of the spirit of meekness today because I could have really wished to that. No, you know, it's like, whoa. Um, but we say, Lord, I don't know how to love this person. I don't know how to, to bring out the best in this situation. I don't know how to look at it through your eyes. I need you. And at that point, when we say, I need you, then, then God's spirit can work through us and begin to uh, actually change us to do the very things that we'd, that we'd like to do anyway, but find ourselves unable most of the time to do. Now, So, think, what tangible things do we do differently because of the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness? Because if it doesn't actually uh, come out in our um, behavior, then I don't know if it actually is happening. You know, let's say, um, if people come for counseling and they've got all these issues and stuff, and I said, uh, you know, what would you like to do differently? And usually they go, nothing, I want the other person to do something different, you know. 
it's good. That's why they call it counseling. And you know, <laughs> well, let's go back a little bit. You know, what are you going to do differently? Because you can't do the same things and uh, and be transformed. So, if the fruit of the spirit is faithfulness, if God's character of faithfulness is is, is coming out through us and uh, reflected in our own life, what what happens differently? Well, I think the first thing is. Uh, and we've talked about this a lot before, but it's we start to treat people differently. Now, I'm saying this as a guy who confessionally is not very good with people. You know, I get that. I'm, I haven't given up on it, though. And, um, and we start to treat people uh, differently than we normally would. And, uh, and we start to look at people not as they are right now, but as they could be as they experience uh, God's grace and mercy and faithfulness. And so we don't look at, you know, who they were yesterday or who they are right now, but we, but we look at them and say, um, I see who they can be by God's grace. Now I gotta tell you, that, that's not always a natural thing to do. Because I see folks and I go, wow, <laughs> write them off, you know. And uh, But does God write them off? Or is it possible that their lives become transformed um, because of God's mercy? And if we start seeing people through God's eyes, that changes the way we relate to them, that changes the way we act around them, that changes... Uh, how how we communicate with them, everything changes, and uh, and we can start to call out the best in people because we're seeing them as as the recipients of God's incredible faithfulness that doesn't go away. Um, uh, you know that happened to me. I, my life was transformed. Uh, you all know um, when I went to University Press and and started working with Bruce Larson and. And he was the, the first person who I'd go in and go, oh, well, I, I, I do this, I, I got a lot of issues, you know, that's sort of my monologue, kind of like my sermons, you know, I got a lot of issues. You know? and, uh, and he would seem unimpressed by them, you know, and, and usually I could lay out a bunch of stuff and people would go, wow, hey, you got a mess of trouble, you know. But he was totally almost bored <laughs> uh, with my issues. And then he would treat me in a certain way or he'd ask me to do something and I'd go, why would you ask me to do that? Don't you know? Blah, 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 blah. They'd go, why? Because that's what, that's who you are. And, and I started to become who I was in his eyes, not who I was in uh, my eyes. And it actually changed my world. It, it changed my world. And, and I kept going, don't you know that I'm troubled? Don't you get it? You know, and he, he was slow. He never got it, really. Um, the next thing is, um, this isn't always easy for, for me, but it's you bring others with you. Uh, if we're going to reflect God's faithfulness, we don't live our lives alone. We, we are not called to be Christians alone. Um, we, we bring people with us. And usually, um, usually that takes more work. Have you ever done that? Have you ever tried to have somebody help you with something? And it takes so much more work. It's like, I could just do this myself if you just get out of the way. You know, that's why I was paid by my dad 50 cents an hour to stay out of the way. <laughs> I learned absolutely nothing. <laughs> but, but you know, I made some money there, so that's good. Um, and, uh, and I sometimes think, you know, wow, you know, we could really accomplish a lot if we could just get rid of everybody. <laughs> but that's not the way of faithfulness is. That's not the way God works. It's you bring someone with you. So, for example, in, in Acts, uh, uh, Barnabas leader in the new emerging church and teaching everything like that. And what does he do? He leaves where he's doing his ministry and he goes out to Podunkville and he finds Paul who is living alone 
Uh, nobody in the, church, in the church wants anything to do with him because he's dangerous and he's been killing them and stuff like that. You know, he's not really trustworthy. And uh, and he goes and gets him and persuades him to come back and team teach with him at the church. Now you look at that and you go, that's crazy. How about getting somebody qualified who the church will accept who, you know, more simpatico. But he brings the one that nobody trusts, who nobody wants to be around, and doesn't want in the circle, and he goes and he gets him, and he actually has to persuade him to come. Come with me. We're going to do this together. We're going to serve together. And that changes the whole Christendom. I mean, most of the Bible comes about, and the, the New Testament comes about, all those letters that Paul wrote after Barnabas came and got him and got him involved in ministry, and they taught together and they served together um, up until they had a fight and went their own ways. But he went and got him. And I'm thinking, why is it so difficult to go and get somebody and invite them to come along? Why is that so difficult? Um, because they may not do it our way. They may approach it differently. They may try and change things. And they may not get the vision that I have exactly the way I have it. Well, too bad. That's why we need each other. We need each other to say, you know, let's do something different. <laughs> and, and then we begin to grow that way. And the faithfulness is that we stay in it and we, and we see what God can do as we bring others along with us. Now, the third one is... Oh, wait, no, I have to tell you something here. Um, so... At the end of his life, uh, Bruce uh, was talking with me. We were having dinner, and Hazel was there, and uh, Eileen. And, uh, and Eileen said something like, you know, thank you for hiring John and hanging in with him, you know. And he did he, not have a lot of success before you hired him. <laughs> and uh, I think I was a three-strike loser on the ministry scale. And... Uh, um, he said, well, you know, John was the biggest risk of my entire ministry. <laughs> I'm thinking he was going to say, I saw things in him. <laughs> I saw stuff in him that made me know, you know, that he was going to make it and everything would be great. He goes, oh, no, you know, he, for the minute I met him, he was the biggest risk in ministry. I know. He said, I knew this could go bad. <laughs> And he said, that wasn't just when I met him. Years of working together, and I still thought, this could go bad. <laughs> that never changed. But he, said, but he said, my life was different because I took the risk. I didn't walk away because he was the biggest risk. I was talking with Hazel a while back, and she brought that up to me. <laughs> oh, you have to remember that stuff. Yeah. But, but you do take the risk, you know, and you say, let's do this together. And, uh, and I think God honors that. I think God honors that a lot. Now, the third one. How do we, what do we do differently? We, we let God uh, use us in greater ways and in greater things than we think we can handle. Now, this goes against kind of the American culture of um, uh, everybody has a certain level of competence, and so we let them work in their area of competence. Or the things that we can succeed at, that's what we're going to attempt. Um, that is so unbiblical. The, what God's calling us to do often is to do things that we have no chance of succeeding at. Isn't that weird? That we're absolutely not qualified for. Because then the glory goes to God and we're just as surprised as anyone else. And so uh, one of the things we need to do is not say, okay, what is it that we're guaranteed success in? Let's do that. See how we trusted God. We took these little steps that, that uh, we knew we could do. See, we really trust God. No, you don't. Not at all. How about We let God take us where we're way over our head. See, that's when this faithfulness becomes demonstrated to us. Because if we're not over our head, we don't even recognize it. And I think one of the things we need to have a conversation about as we go along is what are some things that we can get involved in that we're totally incapable of doing? 
We never have those conversations, do we? What, what is it we can do that this could be a disaster? <laughs> we are so ill-equipped for this. All right, maybe God's in it. Let's do it. And then, and then we get changed because we discover His faithfulness is there even in this. Um, I was talking I was, years ago. I went down. To, I used to love going to Haiti, and uh, first I thought I was going to Tahiti, but then I, I it was really different. But um, <laughs> I was visiting a little, uh, hospital clinic out way out out of town and uh, out of Port-au-Prince, and uh, staying with a doctor and his wife. And as we're walking over to the clinic. I said, now, what do you do to, you know, protect yourself? Because, you know, 80% of the population has AIDS. So what do you do? He goes, we don't do anything. We just assume everybody has AIDS. We don't test. We don't do it. We just treat everybody like honored patients. And we wash our hands and we wear gloves and we do all these things. You know, but, but he said, we don't try and distinguish or identify. Who would have thought that this old retired doctor from Seattle would end up going down there and doing a great ministry? <laughs> a whole part of the country is, is finding health and, and uh, love and care. Um, and it's so far beyond him. You know? But it was, it was meaningful and it was powerful. And he was not uh, amazed or amused by the problems. So, we're going to do things that are terribly unfulfillable. I'm your pastor, so I'm telling you that. Okay. Okay. And then the last one. And this is one you've heard over and over again. Our faithfulness is, comes alive in forgiveness. And God's faithfulness is demonstrated to us in forgiveness. And uh, we've got to forgive ourselves. We've got to forgive the people around us. We've got to ask people around us to forgive us. We've got to you know, it's a whole network of um, needing to let go and move on. And I know that's hard for me. It's hard for some of you. And uh, I keep trying to, I do it, I forgive them, and then I kind of grab it back, carry it a little further. And then I forgive them, and then I grab it back, and then I let it go, and then I grab it back. You know, but, um, but if we're going to experience what it said in Lamentations, that um, new every morning. It's new every morning. Uh, then we have to be able to choose to forgive so that we can experience that new day. Right? I told you about the Westfall fight. <laughs> uh, it was so bad. Uh, and everybody had their own viewpoint in it. I had the right viewpoint, obviously, but but I was kind of batshit crazy with anger, so it was like it was hard to know. You know that's a theological word, <laughs> and so I was we were raging, and then we'd cry, and then we'd yell, and then we'd argue, and then we'd cry, and then rage again. It was like it was going on and on and on, and finally we were just exhausted. Later than I, three of us sitting, and every time one of us would try and leave the room, we'd go, no, no, get back, You're, we're staying in this, you know, we're going to stay in this. And so we, we kept hunkering down, and the neighbors kept going, let them go! <laughs> and, uh, and it was going on, and then finally, this kind of quietness of, uh, we're exhausted, we've been crying, we've been yelling, we've been fighting, we've been arguing, all of this stuff, and uh, it's silent for a minute, and Damien goes, well, I think I'm going to sign up for tomorrow. What about you guys? Well, we didn't want to sign up for tomorrow. We, we, I, like we still had some stuff to deal with, but so we sat there for a while, and I said, you're gonna sign up for tomorrow? He goes, yeah, I'll start over tomorrow. And I went, okay, I'm gonna sign up for tomorrow too. And then Eileen goes, you know, I'll sign up for tomorrow too. And I realized, if it's new every morning, that means every single day we have to choose to sign up. We have to sign up. We have to say, okay, I'm in it. I'm in it. We all have good reasons to not be in it, but we we'll say, okay, I'm, I'm going to start over. And I'm going to let you start over. 
and we're going to go forward today. Now that day may be good, it may be hard, it may be different than we thought, whatever it is, but we, then we get a, another choice. Are we going to sign up for tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to sign up for tomorrow. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. When I was a kid, we used to sing hymns um, because we were Presbyterian church. So, you know, you're in your third grade and you're singing hymns, you know, with gusto. And uh, there was one that I sang all the time and uh, it had kind of uh, old words to it and stuff because it's an old hymn. But uh, you probably know it. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I've needed, thy hand is provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me and unto you and unto the people sitting around you and unto the people you're going to see this week. Great is thy faithfulness. So to close this service, I asked Sheila. I don't know if she knows it or not, but uh, could you come up and lead us in this? <laughs> she said yes. Now or just now? <laughs> and she said, she rolled her eyes and said yes. <laughs> so we're going to sing this together, right? Yes, we're going to sing it together, and I think you sing better when you sing. So sing. <laughs>
benefit in our lives if we let him, as the Spirit works. So go in the peace, love, and joy of the God who made you, who knows you, who loves you, who's given everything for you. Amen. 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 Amen.